Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Rodney for our Wednesday night Bible study here at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church. We're I'm getting started a tad bit late. Uh, hello, everybody. This is, as I said, Pastor Rodney here at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church for our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're starting to get we'll be going to be gone in a few moments. Uh, my wife has just got home from work, so just ignore her as she's bringing in a few things. Um, I hope everybody's doing this good, and we're just going to wait a few minutes for more folks start coming on as we're preparing for our Bible study this evening. I hope everybody's doing well as we are gathering. As everyone is starting to come online little by little. Hello, Mike and Pat. We're glad that you're here this evening. And others, for those who are visiting us from other places, this is our Mount Tabor United Methodist Church Bible study tonight. You're welcome to join us this evening. Hello, John. I'm glad that you're here this evening. We'll give a few more moments and we'll get started as other people are coming online. I hope you all have had a, everyone is having a good day right now. We're all having a good day. Yeah, we'll get started in a few moments. Hello, Oz. Looks like Oz. Hello, Oz. And I guess that may be Linda. Well, at least we know it's Oz. Welcome, welcome. We're going to have an interesting topic tonight. And the topic will probably expand until uh, next Wednesday, maybe Wednesday after. But uh, we'll, we'll dig, dig in in a little bit. Hey, Linda. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you all are here this evening. Give it a few more moments and then we will begin. So tonight is our Bible study. We're going to be looking, uh, I, I labeled it, uh, Who is God Voting For? I know that's probably a little... Uh, a title that you're like, well, wait a minute, Pastor Rodney, I thought you were not going to endorse candidates. Well, I'm not going to be endorsing any candidates, but I thought that would be a nice topic to talk about tonight. We're going to be digging in and looking at biblical reflections on who is God voting for in this coming election season. And uh, we're going to look at this broadly this evening. Uh, we'll start tonight and probably carry on uh, next couple of Wednesdays uh, this evening. So I'm glad that folk are arriving. We're getting a few people in here there. And if you would like, feel free to put in the comment field if you are here with us. You also can remain anonymous as we are gathering this evening. Uh, well, let's go ahead and open up with a, a time of, of prayer and reflection. Um, many of us are dealing with a variety of struggles right now this evening. I know that here at Mount Tabor, uh, we have a uh, variety of people. Uh, Betty Riley, one of our members, is in the hospital. Uh, Marilyn, who is in an assisted community, is uh, at the near stage of her end of her life right now. We also have many in our church who are still walking through the grief of people who have uh, uh, died. I know it's a George and Reed are here this evening. Welcome. <laughs> and so... Um, and so we're going to be focusing this evening. We have, and you know, as a country, we're just dealing with a variety of stuff right now. We're seeing just how divided we are as a country over a variety of things in the midst of the griefs and the struggles that we're having. So I welcome everyone this evening just to, just to take a deep breath, to become still and know that God is God and that God is with us this evening. Allow yourself to to become aware of the God who loves you and uh, the God who cares about you. To become aware of the God who is present with us in the good days and the tough days. Lord God, we thank you for this, this evening, for your mercy and your kindness, your compassion and your justice, we ask, O oh God, that your comfort would be with many right now in our church and those who are 
visiting with us this evening on our online presence. People walk into moments of grief and loss of life. For those who are sick right now, Lord, for our country that is moving through difficult times, Lord, we thank you, God, for your presence and your power and your guidance this evening as we gather to study your word and reflect on your power and presence in our world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good evening, as I said, everyone. This evening, the, the title of this study is, uh, Who is God Voting For? And I titled that in a way because, one, that usually catches people's attention. Because, as you know, we're in the midst of an election season. Um, we'll, in November, we're going to be voting for our president and a variety of senators and representatives throughout this country. At the, and then we're going to brought in a variety of government leaders at the local, national, state level. So tonight I thought we would start a, a study that would probably continue, possibly continue for the next Wednesday and after, on looking at some biblical principles that I think we who are followers of Jesus might want to take in consideration as we are thinking about this whole idea of voting and this, this privilege and that we have as particularly American Christians on who is God voting for. Now, this is going to start out probably slightly different than maybe what you're expecting, and then we're going to um, expand. And what I want to do is just just give us some, some, some what I sense are some, some biblical reflections that we might want to take into consideration as we are uh, talking about this subject, because there's a tendency for we American Christians to sometimes have an assumption upon who we think God is voting for or not. We may have that. But I thought what we might do this evening is just flesh out some biblical principles and then see how those biblical principles might play out as we are considering our role in voting in this coming season. Now, one of the things that I want to emphasize this evening um, I'm going to focus more on we who follow Jesus. What is the role that we who follow Christ has in this country? There are multitudes of different religious groups and non-religious groups and, and a variety of perspectives on this. But I want to focus particularly on, like, on those who are followers of Jesus and how we uh, wrestle with and look at this whole idea of how we vote and, and that goes along with it. And so I'm going to start with a few biblical principles I think that are important as we gather, and uh, and I'm going to be throwing out a lot of scripture for these next couple of Wednesdays, just to to get us some principles that we might need to be aware. Of. First of all, I want to uh, we're going I want us to look at the Matthew chapter six verses twenty five through thirty three. Matthew chapter six verses twenty five through thirty three. Now this passage is one of the teachings of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. So let's hear what he has to say. He says, therefore. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you worry at a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the fields, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what we shall drink, or what we will wear? For it's the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So one of the first things I think we American Christians need to embrace as we're looking at Election Day is what is our first seeking? What do we first seek? Now, the reality is, is that we as Americans are taught that we should be seeking America, seeking the good for America. 
the reality as followers of Jesus, Jesus would say our first thing we should be seeking is God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And he says that in the midst of the worries and concerns of life. Now, when we come to the season of election, we have concerns and worries, no doubt. We are concerned about who will be in charge, how that will affect our pocketbook, how that will affect our lives. Well, Jesus knows that too. And it's interesting that Jesus said, basically for the basic things like food and clothing, do not worry about that stuff, but instead focus your attention on the seeking of God's kingdom. I want, I want to hear this. We as followers of Jesus are not, our first call is not to seek the kingdom of America or any other kingdom. We're not even called to seek our own personal kingdoms. But to seek a, a, an idea of a kingdom of God, a reality where God's will is done and it's played out in very practical ways around us. So the first principle I think we should take into consideration is what we seek. So when we are considering voting for people, when we're looking at where people stand, we're more concerned about not what we're going to worry about and what they, but what we're to seek. And we're first called to seek Khan's kingdom. Second principle I want us to think about is found in, in, in John chapter 6. John, excuse me, John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. You know these verses. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him sh may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not come, did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. <clears throat> Now, in those verses, we see something very interesting, very obvious. God loves the world. That God is not just concerned with America, but God's love is for all people. In fact, the term world is the cosmos. Humans, creation, everything. For God loves everything. So first principle when we're thinking about election is that we're seeking the kingdom of God and not particularly the kingdom of America. And the second is to be aware that God's love is for all people, not just for Americans. Now you say, well, how does this all play out with the idea of election? I think it's important, and you'll see that as we move through this. Because if, our, if when we go into an election booth, if our only focus is what's happening in America, then we may miss out the idea that God is concerned for everyone. That God's love is not just for Americans, but it's also for, for Mexicans, for Spanish folk, for folk in Nigeria, Russians, Taiwan, all, that, all those people. God has a global universal love. So it's not just what's happening in America that God is concerned about. It's concerned all over the world. So, so, if we're seeking God's kingdom, which is, transcends what's going on in America, but America is part of it, if we're also aware that God loves all people, if God loves all people, then immediately we're drawn into the reality that what we do on election day is not just about us as an Americans, but it's about all people. Especially as followers of Jesus, we have more of a, a global perspective. So we seek God's kingdom. We're aware that God loves all people. The third thing is that I want to hear from these words from Matthew. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. And this is Jesus at the end of his, after he had been resurrected, he says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority. Universal authority. Jesus says, Now go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, 
And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. All right. In this passage, Jesus gives a mandate, a commission, a call to the 11 Jewish believers and those there to go and spread and make disciples throughout the world. And so one of our goals as followers of Jesus is also to be about disciple making. Now you say, well, how does this have to do anything with Election Day? Well, everything. Once again, our focus is not just about what God's going to be doing in America, but what God's going to be doing everywhere. And that our call, our call is not just for the, how we make disciples in America, but how we make disciples throughout the world. Okay? So I'm setting up some principles that will come into play as we talk more and more about the idea of elections. And one of the, th and one of the things I hope you get from these three, these three passages of Scripture, God has a far bigger plan than just what is in our own life. And God has a far bigger plan than just what's going on in America. But God has a far bigger plan that stretches throughout the cosmos. Now, you and I, though, all we can really do in this plan is vote. But it's going to really matter a lot when we start thinking about, okay, is God behind this or God behind that? Well, God is for the good of what goes on in the earth. God wants us to seek the kingdom of God that transcends throughout different countries where believers of Jesus are spread out. God wants us to understand he loves all people. All right? So, which means that when we as followers of Jesus think about things in a country, we think about it locally and globally because our brothers and sisters are spread throughout the globe. Okay? So, we have a government in America. We have a particular form of government. And we're going to be exercising... Uh, our right to vote in a few months. But one of the things that we need to be in consideration and be thinking about when we come is what is going on behind all these governments and kingdoms. So if you remember in Scripture, um, if you remember in Scripture, one of the temptations that Jesus experienced before he started ministry, and I want you to hear this temptation that he experienced at the hands of the devil. It says here in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, then the devil led him up and showed him an instant, showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. As Jesus was beginning his ministry, one of the temptations that was thrown at Satan, uh, thrown at Jesus by the devil, was a kind of a shortcut. In other words, the devil was saying, Jesus, if you want all these kingdoms and all these governments and all everything to come under your authority, all you have to do is bow down to me. Just bow down, and they belong to me. They've been given to me. All you got to do is bow down to me. What this tells us is something, that behind every government, even the best of governments, there is the reality of the principies and powers that oppose God too. Now sometimes we see them very obviously, and sometimes they're very subtle. And that these spread throughout. And so we have to be into taking into consideration when we are thinking about our government and elections, that behind everything that happens, there is the powers of darkness that are also seeking to manipulate. And one thing to be aware of is that Jesus could have taken the easy route. He could have avoided all the suffering. All he had to do is bow down to the enemy, and then the enemy would have given him all the authority and the powers of government. 
Well, we need to hear this as followers of Jesus. Followers of Jesus do not need the power and the authority of the governments to do our job. Sometimes when it comes to government and elections, we followers of Jesus can fall into a, a temptation trap that Jesus avoided. That if we will that if we do certain things, then we can get certain governmental power. And this governmental power will enable us to do the work of the kingdom and the spread of the gospel. We do not need that. I want you to think about this. Jesus did not, when he, was, when he started his ministry, go talk to Herod or any of the religious leaders to start doing his work. But there's been a, a reality a, 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 in, our, in our world for 2,000 years that the church needs the government in order to do the work of the kingdom. That if we will get political power, then that's going to make it easy for us to do the work of the kingdom. But the problem is, as we see in this temptation, we may be playing right ourselves into the hand of the enemy. All right, so let's review a little bit. As we're coming to this election day and we're beginning to think about who we should vote, how we should vote, let's remember some of the things that we've already talked about. One, that we first seek the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. We see that in Matthew 6. So our first focus is not actually to seek America. I know that sounds odd because we're going to be voting in America, but we're actually first called to seek the kingdom of God, and that kingdom transcends all nations. It's it's found and it's, it's, it manifests everywhere, but it transcends. Two, we need to be reminded that God loves the world. That it's not just about what God is doing in America. That God is concerned with everyone because God loves everybody. So in other words, I went a few years ago to a small country called Zimba, uh, uh, Swaziland in Africa. Very small, very small little nation. God loves those people just as much as he loves us Americans. Remember that Jesus now has all authority in heaven and on earth, and he has called us as followers to go and make disciples in all nations. And we realize that we do all this in the context of the context of where basically the enemy is working through governmental systems, all ones, to get us to give in to the temptation of bowing down and using that power to get our work done. Now, as I said, it's, this is going to continue next week, and it'll begin to, to pull together. So I'm going to take a couple more minutes to deal with two more principles as we're looking at the idea of, of, of our coming election day. The next Wednesday, I'm going to bring some of this together as we begin to look more and more about how we followers of Jesus in America go about voting and how we uh, approach this. I want to also bring one other passage that we've been talking about for the last few Sundays at Mount Tabor from Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5. So you remember that passage I've been talking about? Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying will be no more. And pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is sitting on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Okay. What Revelation tells us is that God has a plan that he's working actively in the history of all nations in this world. He's moving everything to where there will one day be a new heaven and a new earth. And he's saying that I'm going to make all things new. So basically, America, all the people of America, along with the people of other nations, are all part of this plan that God is moving us towards trying to make all things new. Trying to uh, give us an idea that there's a future that yet's to come that is a beautiful future in spite of how difficult things are now. 
Okay. So, I've given you kind of a broad, some principles to be thinking about. And these principles are important as we begin to flesh out a little bit more when we think about how God approaches government and elections and all that kind of stuff. All right? I'm going to give you one more principle, and then what we're going to do is bring this section of the end and then carry on to next Wednesday. I don't, I don't have enough time. I'm trying to stay within a 30-minute uh, limit to flesh this out. I knew this would go a little longer. But I want to give you one other principle as we're thinking about the principles that we need to aware of. And that's found in the book of Luke. A lot of times when we think about things as humans, we think, that the only thing that's important to God is the big stuff. And that when God's doing something, he's going to use the big countries, the powerful countries. And that a lot of times we have a tendency of thinking that the small things on the side are not important to God's work. And so then when we go to vote in an election, we may just kind of not think about the unknown candidates. We may think not think about the third party candidates. We may minimize all the other little stuff. Or we may also think that God's only focused on the big country of America. But in the book of Luke, there's this in the book of Matthew, there's a story. And if you remember that story, Jesus God comes God sends an angel to Mary, an unknown woman and a, a peasant woman who was engaged to a man named Joseph, who wasn't an unknown peasant man. They didn't have any real political power. They didn't have a lot of power. And on top of that, they weren't government officials. And on top of that, they were part of a nation, a little nation called Israel. So, but God worked through them to start a major big thing, which was the birthing which was the birth of Jesus and his work in the world. And what we learn from this story is this. Big is not better. Right now, God may be doing something in the world that's going to affect the world's future in a big way. And it may not have anything to do with America. Why don't you think about that story? At that time, Rome was the big nation. But the new thing that God was doing was in a stable in a manger, an unknown part of the world. And God was doing something, what a big thing in a very small place of the world. So if you bring all of this together this evening as we come to an end on this first part of who God is voting for, I want us to get an understanding that it's never just about what we Americans do in America. Who we're voting for and how we're voting is not just about what God's doing in this country. It's what God's doing throughout the world. We who follow Jesus, our first citizenship, as Philippians would say, is in the heavens. That our, that our call is to seek the kingdom of God first, not the kingdom of America. And we need to be reminded that God loves all people. So, as we next Wednesday to go a little deeper to talk about who God is voting for, I want us to have a perspective that it's never just about us. When you go into that voting booth, it's not just what is good for America. You have to ask the question, what is good for God's kingdom universally? What is God up to, not just in this country, but other places? See, that puts a lot of weight on that vote, doesn't it? But as we will learn, we're going to learn next Wednesday, guys, the idea of voting for a leader is rather a new thing in human history. In the Bible, people didn't vote for their leaders. There were kings and emperors. No one got to vote for their leaders. And so this idea of voting has a lot of has a lot of importance because God's working through all of us to do something in this world but we need to have a perspective that it's not just about America 
I don't know if I was very clear tonight. I hope I did. If I wasn't, please throw some questions at me because we're going to continue on with this study. And I'm going to go a little deeper and show you some other ways of what we need to be taking into consideration. Now, some of you are thinking, well, I thought Rodney was going to tell us who to vote for tonight or uh, how we should vote. Well, we're going to look a little bit more about some of those more practical questions next Wednesday night. But I wanted to get these basic biblical principles at play. Okay? God loves the world. It's about seeking God's kingdom, not just the kingdom of America. And that when God does something, it may or may not be with the big nations. It may be starting with the little nation, like the nation of Israel, in a small place called Bethlehem, where Jesus began something new. All right? If we have any questions, please let me know. Like tonight, we set up some principles that we'll use next Wednesday as we're going to look at the second part of how God, uh, how God is voting, who God is voting for. I hope, you've, I hope that uh, you're having a good evening. Um, we still have a little bit of daylight. You might be able to get out and walk a little bit. Uh, and I hope you'll be with me next Wednesday as we continue, as I take some of these principles and flesh them out a little bit more in our Bible study next week. Well, I hope you're all well, and you do well, and I pray that you'll go and then go in the peace of Jesus. And as we will continue this Bible study, the second part next Wednesday night. All right, I'll talk with you later. Everyone have a good evening. Bye-bye.